What's up guys, it's Matt, the One Handy Gamer. Welcome back to another drone video. Today we're going to be talking about the Phantom 4. It was announced a few days ago on March 1st. And I did a video about the Phantom 3 last year, so I thought, why not do another video about the Phantom 4 this year? Starting off, the Phantom 4 is supposed to be a complete redesign from the other Phantom drones in the series. Now what that means is they sleek down the body, are using new materials on the outside of the drone, it gives it a little bit more of a shiny texture to it. Now some people might li not like the new design, but overall it really still does look like the other drones in the Phantom line. Most of the people buying this drone aren't going to really care about the looks though. They're going to be caring about the really cool features that DJI has put into it, which is two optical sensors that are placed on the front of the Phantom 4 and it can see at a 90 degree angle, which means it cannot look straight down. It can only look forward and at a 90 degrees, which the optical sensors scan the surroundings and provide an image to the Phantom 4, a 3D image at that, and it can actually detect what's in front of it but it cannot detect small objects like limbs or like say a uh, electrical line electrical wire so it can only detect bigger objects and is actually able to fly over or hover in place to avoid the object and supposedly dji is saying it's an uncrashable drone now technically it's not the optical sensors are only in the front of the drone and you can disable the smart fly controls. So that means you can manually fly and crash the drone, or still with the optical sensors on, you can fly in reverse and still crash the drone because the sensors are not placed on the back of the drone, it's only in the front. The Phantom 4 can technically pilot itself, leaving the user to mess with the camera and capture really cool video and pictures. But, that raises another question on how safe the vision software or whatever DJI is going to officially call it, how safe it actually is and how accurate it is. Even if the software is 99.9% .9 accurate, there's still going to be errors. Software and hardware does not work 100% of the time. There's always going to be a few errors and a few failures, no matter how good your software and hardware, hardware is. The Phantom 4 has a slightly new redesigned gimbal and the gimbal is placed differently compared to the Phantom 3. The gimbal is placed where the weight is distributed more evenly so it should fly even smoother which no one really had a problem with it flying smoothly on the Phantom 3 but I digress. The, the Phantom 4's gimbal is attached to the camera at two different places instead of the one place on the Phantom 3 and I know the Phantom, a few Phantom 3 owners had problems with crash landing where the gimbal would break right there. So hopefully DJI is fixing that and having two points of contact on the camera so one doesn't break off. So that means there's two motors on the axis where the camera is. And I'll show you, I'll show you pictures of it. Using all the new sensors the Phantom 4 has, it can hover in air more accurately and actually track subjects, which means Let's say there's a person walking down the road. You can just go on the app and highlight that person and then the optical sensors and everything will be able to take a, three, a 3D model of that person and actually follow and track that person while detecting for objects in the way which they can either take off and go over the object or hover in place and wait for your command to do whatever you want to do. Now all these features are really cool but unfortunately, the price tag of the Phantom 4 is kind of premium. It is $1,400. Now, compared to the Phantom 3, which the professional version was about $1,200, I believe, about $1,000 on, on some good deals, does the new Phantom 4 deliver the kind of performance for that price tag? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Now, if you're really into autonomous flying, yeah, that's a really good price for a drone that can fly itself. 
But there are some caveats. You can't fly backwards. There's no sensors all, all the way around the drone. So that means you have to be flying in that direction, which I mean, you probably will anyways. But then again, is the price worth it? All the owners of the Phantom 3, I would say just keep your Phantom 3s. The Phantom 3s are great drones. And the Inspire 1 is great. There's a lot of amazing drones that cost less than the Phantom 4 is. But none of them can technically fly themselves and detect objects in their path. So you have to make a choice. Do you want a drone that's technically safer? Or do you want to have manual control over the drone you're flying? And honestly, you can do manual control with both. But in my opinion, I want a drone I want to fly myself. I would actually want to build my own drone and then fly it. But if you don't want to build your own drone, it's okay. You can probably just get a DJI Phantom 3 standard, which is going for about 450 to 500 bucks. And there should be some good discounts coming on it soon. So hopefully it drops down to 300, 350. And I would recommend that over the Phantom 4. If you have a, if you have a tight budget, I would totally recommend it. Or you have the other option to build your own drone. So, I mean, there's a lot of different options. I wouldn't just go ahead and pick the Phantom 4 because it can fly itself. You should learn how to fly manually. Buy a cheap little toy quadcopter, fly it around your house, learn controls, and then if you want to get into aerial videography or photography, then think about upgrading to a Phantom 4 or a Phantom 3. But overall, the Phantom 4's features are really, really cool. And this progression in technology is amazing for hobbyists and professional drone flyers. So what does this mean to the consumer? The consumer should expect lower drone prices, of course, but Hopefully this technology at the premium cost begins to trickle down to us consumers. Now the, profess the professionals have the money to go ahead and buy the drone as soon as it comes out. And the consumers can wait around to the next generation of the product and expect the price to be lower. And might have different quality camera. There's different companies that make possibly better products if you look at unique their q500 4k while it cannot fly itself has a very very capable camera on it and it flies really really stable so there's what i'm trying to get at is do not just buy a drone from dji because dji has a wonderful brand name okay they have a, a cult following almost so guys, pick a drone because of the features of it. And the price tag, if you have a low budget, pick a drone that you want to learn how to fly manually before you go off and try to get autonomous drone. I stress that you fly manually. Wow, this video somewhat turned into a off topic rant, but I want to get my point across about flying manually and learning to fly with a cheap drone. You should always, always do that. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this somewhat, I hope, informational video about the Phantom 4. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, leave a like down below, comment your opinion on all the stuff I talked about, and hope you guys are doing well, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Oh, 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 oh,